Today we're going to be discussing the Avia ventilator. This video itself is by no means comprehensive. It's just going to get you guys a quick and dirty start to how to operate the Avia, go through basic navigation and basic setups. So let's get started. Um, the Avia ventilator uses a basic Y circuit. So any basic Y circuit can be used with humidification or with just a plain HME. And it uses an expiratory filter. The expiratory filter on this guy is reusable um, and there are also disposable models as well. The filter itself will slide up here. I'll put it in pretty firmly and a water trap is below. The inspiratory side of the ventilator is here, and the expiratory side is towards the expiratory filter. So here's the inspiratory side and the expiratory side. I'll just place this somewhere it won't fall. The power button for the Avia is on the back of the unit. It's got a little flip switch and the Avia will alarm when it turns on. At this point, we have medical gas plugged in. We do not have oxygen on the campus, uh, and we'll get to that. So on the screen itself, we have a couple of options. We have resume current, we'll silence that. We have resume current patient, uh, which will jump you back into previous settings. Um, this is if you just recently turned off the ventilator or if you wanted to save settings from a previous EST. Uh, we're going to select new patient. We're going to pretend this is a brand new uh, patient and we're going to run through the EST and basic setup and modes. So new patient, patient accept. It'll take us to our new window uh, where we will select our patient size. We have neo, pediatric, and adult. We're going to hit size except for adult. And we have a couple of options here. It's gonna start us off in volume AC for our initial startup and our safety valve will be open. So we will start by tapping our EST. So it'll ask us to block the patient Y after we've disconnected it from the patient. We would use probably a glove or a cap for this. We'll hit continue and it's gonna take 90 seconds. So the initial leak test and the circuit compliance test will Begin first, takes about 15 seconds, and it says we've passed. Um, later on, you can go back and view what your actual circuit compliance is if that's important to you. Our O2 sensor calibration will finish within uh, the last of the 90 seconds. Um, since we don't have oxygen, it's going to fail, but just keep that in mind, okay? So we'll hit cancel for now. We have the ability to turn on leak compensation. It's either on or off. Leak compensation only corrects for baseline leaks in the endotracheal tube around the cuff or around the non-invasive mask. It's only to maintain PEEP. It's not activated during the breath. Here's our displayed circuit compliance. We can use AAC, which is also known as ATC. Um, it's not as strong as the Draeger V500, um, we recommend if you're doing SBTs that you basically just use a CPAP of five um, and that, that's probably gonna help you out the most. The AAC on the Avia isn't that fantastic, but it is an option. We can change our tube size and our length. We can also enter in our patient weight and identification if that's applicable. So, we can hit setup except after we put in our initial settings. So right now we're in volume AC. We can adjust our volume here in liters. We have our rate, our peak flow, we can, which is gonna adjust our eye time. Inspiratory pause, we recommend that you keep that at zero. We have our peep down here. We can set that at five. We have our flow trigger. We recommend that you set your flow trigger right around two to start and then uh, titrate it to your patient. FiO2 is here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to advanced settings. 
So advanced settings allows you to jump into extra menus here. So we'll start with our volume. Now on the volume, you have the option of VSync. VSync is basically PRVC. We recommend you keep VSync off because it causes a ton of confusion um, and it can be disingenuous. So keep VSync off, it'll time out. Uh, VSync rise is just your actual rise on those PRVC breaths. And then we have the option of turning a sigh on or off. The sigh is gonna give you a breath. Uh, every 100 breaths, it's one and a half times the original volume that is set. We can go into peak flow. Peak flow has the option of demand flow. We recommend you turn demand flow off, especially if you're in volume AC in patients with ARDS because it can uh, have them, allow them to take in volumes that uh, we have not set. You also have the option of a square or decelerating waveform. It's going to adjust your eye time. Um, personally, I prefer decelerating waveform. Uh, square flow waveforms do have their places, but it's gonna be more comfortable, so uh, we'll keep that there. Uh, nothing under inspiratory pause, nothing under peep. We'll go into our flow trigger. The Avia has two different triggers on it, um, trigger criteria. First of all, we have our bias flow. Bias flow needs to be at or above our actual flow trigger. We'll silence that. We recommend you keep it around five. Um, and a reminder, you wanna turn your bias flow down when we're giving actual nebulizers just to stop uh, us from wasting medication uh, as it goes through the circuit. Our flow trigger, we recommend two, as I previously said, and our pressure trigger will be one. When you do decide to turn off your bias flow to give a, nebul uh, a nebulized medication, we recommend you turn your bias flow down. When you do that, it's going to switch the patient from a flow trigger to a pressure trigger. So make sure you're watching the patient uh, initially and make sure that they're doing okay with whatever pressure trigger you do have set. All right, nothing under FiO2. That's our advanced settings for volume AC. We can go to alarm limits. This is how we're gonna set our alarm criteria. I will get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Up here on the top left, we have our high rate. Um, 40 is usually a good number just initially and we're, you can titrate that to your patient. Low tidal volume is here. High tidal volume is here. Uh, low minute ventilation high minute ventilation, low peak pressure, high peak pressure. We also have our low peep. Um, and finally, we have our actual apnea interval. Uh, so if the patient's been apneic in, in whatever mode you're in, that's your apnea time. So we have this one set for 20 seconds. So once you're happy with everything, uh, you've done your EST, you've done your initial settings, you can go ahead and hit setup accept. That'll take you into the actual ventilation mode. Uh, the default on the Avia when you first start it up is to have pressure, flow, and volume displayed. We can modify these uh, numbers that show up on the left here. So if we wanted to, we could, we could go through here, we can display our leak, total minute ventilation, and the big one that you guys might want to use is frequency over tidal volume or RSBI. So we'll just throw that up there. So you basically have five, five things you can display while you're watching your waveforms. Waveforms themselves can be changed. You tap under the label and you can change it. Tap again to accept it. There's also an accept button down here if the touchscreen is, is not um, picking up your fingers too well. All right, also what we can do to change modes is we can go to, excuse me, not modes. If we want to display loops, we can go under screens and hit loops and you can modify these loops into whatever you want to see, okay? We also have monitors. If you don't wanna watch a waveform and you want numbers for your quick vent checks, you're gonna hit monitors. You're gonna have all of these values. These are just the defaults here for volume AC. You can, again, go in, touch it, and touch again to accept after scrolling through. 
we have trends. You can go back and view your trends over time. Um, you can also change your waveform values and your scales here, X and Y axis, okay? Um, this will allow you to basically trend patients while they're on RSBIs or um, give information to the doctors if you need. Uh, maneuvers, we have the ability on the Avia to do esophageal monitoring. Uh, MIP P100, which is likely not going to be applicable to you guys as well as PFLEX. We can also automatically measure auto peep. However, we recommend just doing an expiratory hold. Expiratory hold button is down here. You can hold it for up to, I believe, 20 seconds. Inspiratory hold is right next to it. The biggest button you'll probably end up using is your standby button. It'll ask you to, if you want to accept this after going screens and standby. If we say yes, it'll put the ventilator automatically in standby. And we can hit resume here. It won't give any breaths until it feels resistance and then it'll start ventilating again. So there we are again, okay? We will exit out of this, okay. You have the ability on the Avia to freeze the screen. So if you tap freeze, you can scale back and measure something like your PIP or your plateau pressures, okay? We have the ability to input events. This is probably not gonna be applicable. I've never seen anyone use this in clinical practice. All right, to change modes, tap mode. You can go into pressure AC, volume SIMV, pressure SIMV. Today we're just gonna only go over volume and pressure AC. Uh, we're gonna avoid APRV and SIMV because um, unless you're using high rates on SIMV greater than 10, uh, we don't recommend using it. APRV on the Avia is not fantastic. It has a lot of expiratory resistance um, and it's quite desynchronous. So we also have PRVC AC. If you decide that you want to use what you guys would traditionally use as auto flow, you would tap PRVC AC and you would hit mode accept. We are now in PRVC AC. All right. We can go through the advanced settings again. Under PRVC AC, uh, we have volume limit. That's going to limit the amount of volume the patient can take in during a breath. Inspiratory rise, we recommend you just keep it around five. It doesn't make that big of a difference as far as affecting the slope of the breath, okay? Again, we have alarm limits on the right. We can set those. Alarm reset and alarm silence are here. This will silence the alarms for uh, two minutes. We can give manual breaths on the Avia. We can also hit suction. This is similar to the Draeger V500 in that it's going to increase their FiO2 79% as a default above your set FiO2. It'll do that for two minutes. It also will cancel any alarms that might show up. Instead of hitting suction, we can also just increase our oxygen concentration, okay? Again, increases it by 79% above our set. Uh, you can go in and modify that if that's too high of an FiO2 for your patient. Okay, that's kind of the basic settings. So we'll go ahead, go back to mode. We have PRVC SIMV as an option. I wanted to talk about apnea settings, okay? So let's say we have our patient in PRVC AC and we want to switch them over uh, to CPAP with pressure support and do an SBT. So we'll hit CPAP with pressure support ventilation and we can choose before we go into it, our apnea modes, okay? You have two on the Avia, you have volume and pressure, okay? We will go ahead and choose just volume. We'll start out by setting our pressure support. So that'll be five over five. And we'll keep our flow trigger at 20 just for this demonstration. You can also hit advanced settings to change your other trigger criteria. And then you have FiO2. To actually modify your apnea settings, you're gonna tap apnea settings, and it'll 
it'll jump down into this menu on the left here, okay? We can set up our rate. So let's say the patient's on a rate of 12. Originally, before we go, it'll default to what was previously set, okay? So if we're in volume AC with a rate of 12 and a volume of 500, it'll generally default right there, okay? The pressure has an option too. We can set our inspiratory pressure, rate, and eye time. Trying to keep this short and sweet for you guys. So we'll hit mode accept. We are now in CPAP, okay? If you look up on the top left, you can see we have tube compensation on. Okay, what else do we want to do? We'll go into modes. We'll go into pressure AC. We can set our original or our, our initial settings for our patient. We've got inspiratory pressure here. And under inspiratory pressure, under pressure AC, we can hit advanced settings. It's gonna take us into a secondary menu and it's gonna bring up machine volume. This is the minimum amount of volume that the patient's gonna get. So the Avia will see, hey, you set a machine volume of 0.2. We're gonna always deliver 200 mLs to that patient. Volume limit is our max limit. Um, in general, we, we, don't, we don't generally recommend using machine volume or machine limit. Uh, it's completely up to you. Refer to your facility's guidelines, okay? Inspiratory rise, that's gonna affect the slope a little bit. Um, in general, we don't mess with that. It doesn't make that big of a difference. We've got inspiratory time, and we have our flow cycle percent available. There's our PEEP. Again, our triggers and our FiO2. Okay, we say we're good with this. Our alarm criteria is uh, already set for this patient, so we're just going to hit mode accept. We are now in that mode, okay? Um, that basically goes over pretty much all of the navigation in the Avia. There are some little quirks here and there that you will find as you use it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to, to your uh, uh, clinical personnel as far as who's going to be training you with onboarding on this device, okay?